is within reach. It covers 70% of our planet's surface, but only its fringes have been explored. Here are fresh fields for these pioneers to conquer. Some men are lucky and have the chance to explore both the heights and the depths. To one man it was given to be among the first of the astronauts and also one of the first men to live at the bottom of the sea. In 1965, he went 200 feet down to enter Sea Lab, a house built on the ocean floor. His name is Scott Carpenter. I think that uh, after I spent uh, my time underwater, the, the most important thing that I came back with was the realization that that it is now possible for men to live permanently where once they could not even venture for a second. And this is uh, of tremendous importance because uh, if you realize what it means, it means that advancing technology now has has peeled off a layer of ocean water 200 meters thick and it opens up vast new lands and resources and knowledge which is only 200 meters away and which has been there waiting for us for centuries. I uh, lived continually for 30 days underwater in the Navy Sea Lab experiment. The uh, sea lab was an apartment, but it was very crowded. Ten men lived inside. We worked very hard. We slept very little. The living, uh, outside of the fact that you can't whistle, and because uh, the atmosphere is uh, helium, uh, your voice is very high. It sounds very funny. And uh, because it was pressurized inside, uh, we had free access to the ocean floor, and that is the essence of this type of, of oceanographic work. We provide men with pressurized living quarters, and they have the ability to pass freely to and from the, the water surrounding, and this allows them to do much useful work on the sea bottom. the ocean started, as you might expect, in the rich and developed countries. Investors in these countries today have no difficulty in visualizing the seabed as an industrial area. 